Hello and welcome to Academic English UK and today's presentation is on how to improve your PowerPoint slides by avoiding the pitfalls of bad slides. Uh, this presentation today uses and focuses on Microsoft PowerPoint and I'll be looking at these key points. So first of all, um, I think you need to think about your design and just remember you're giving an academic presentation that needs to be professional and business-like. So try and use simple designs. There's lots of different patterns um, that you can use for your designs, but really think about how does my design reflect my presentation? So for example, this design um, of water droplets looks nice, but one would expect that your presentation would be about water. And if it's not, choose something different. Generally, universities may provide you with uh, a design to use, um, or they may ask you to use their logo. Um, and this is a nice starting point. Right, when we think about fonts, fonts you should be thinking about size. So subtitles um, and titles can be up to 44 to 36. Uh, main points are generally 28. And the smallest you should go is about 18. You should use standard fonts like Times New Roman or Arial. Arial um, and this is usually university standard. PowerPoint itself has a default format and this is good enough to use and I probably wouldn't change that. You can see here bad fonts. So the first one's too small. The second one is capitalising. Um, capitalising should only be done if really necessary, but it's actually quite difficult, especially for some international students. Don't use complicated fonts or crazy handwriting fonts. Just use the prescribed format of your university. Colours. You can see here that certain colours don't work. Um, they can be distracting. So generally use blacks, blues, greens and reds. When you think about slide structure, you should be thinking about presenting one to two slides per minute. You should be writing in point form, not complete sentences, and generally four to five points per slide. Try to avoid wordiness. Use your keywords and phrases only. An example of wordiness is this, where you can see it's just a paragraph of writing. Here, you're expecting the audience to read this or you're going to read this for them, but then your presentation becomes a reading. From here, you can take out the key sentences. So this is OK, but to improve this, you should just focus on the nouns in these sentences like this. This has two positive effects. The first one is that you're only providing key points. But the second one is that your audience don't know what you're going to talk about. And that's essential if you want to keep them engaged. So. If we have a look at this example, here um, the student is talking about production processes and they've put in their key points and they've put in a lot of data. Now what audiences will do is they will read this, they've got the general idea and then they'll become disengaged. So a good idea is again to take out data and just keep focusing on the key points like this. So here, I've taken out the data, I've focused on my key points, and I will explain the data to my audience, therefore keeping them engaged. Another way of engagement is through animation. Now, there's lots of different types of animation that you can use, but remember professionalism uh, and serious. So just use the appear animation function, which is found in animations and it's the first one to choose. Appear and disappear is fine. The key points of using animation is this, that if I put up all my points straight away, my audience will read them, get the general idea 
and may become disengaged. So it's often a very good idea to present your points one by one. It's even better if you can present a point after you've said it. So for example, right, now I'm going to talk about production processes. Now my first point is renewable materials um, and I'm going to focus on the year 2007 through to 2015. Bang! And then it comes in and then you give your data and this way there's a form of engagement taking place with you and your audience. Okay. Right, pictures. Uh, in the UK, pictures are not free to be taken from Google. You actually have to have permission. So you should ask permission to use photos. And if you don't know how or who the picture belongs to, then you need to use photo companies that allow non-business use or royalty-free photos. Um, an example of that is Pixabay. But just remember that you, it's copyright infringement to just take anything from the internet that you don't have permission to use. Think about your pictures carefully. Um, even if it looks cute, is it relevant to what you're presenting? Try to avoid baby pictures because you're giving serious business-like professional presentation. Uh, I would avoid cartoons and jokes because what may be funny to you may be seriously offensive to someone else. Um, pictures are good to use and they really help establish your idea. So for example, this picture would represent globalization and then I could talk about my key points and it just helps creativity of a good presentation slide. Graphs. Choosing graphs, um, you have to be very careful that your graphs are not overly complicated and difficult for an audience to understand or for you to explain. So something like this would perhaps be too difficult or too hectic for your audience, along with this one as well. When you are presenting a graph or a chart um, or a table, you need to follow a procedure, which is really First, you should talk about the title of the graph. You should then explain its axes. You should explain any keys and also provide and say the source of where it's come from. Sometimes you may have to rebuild graphs and tables yourself to simplify them. And this is what's happened here, where I've rebuilt a graph just to make it much more simple to explain the differences. Um, Always make sure that when you have a graph, you give a clear correlation of the differences that you have on that slide and you provide a good analysis. Infographics are good to use. These are always very clear and really represent data very visually for audiences. Tables are also a good idea. If they're simple, they're very easy to explain. If they become more complicated, you can use text box and animation. For example, I'm going to focus on Mars. I'm going to look at how far away it is. And I'm also going to look at its orbital velocity. And I can do that through just using text box here um, and animation. Okay. Some students tend to overcrowd their slides by adding graphs on the side, thinking that if it's got a lot of data and information on one slide, then that's better. But actually, from the back of a room, that graph's very difficult to see. So it's much better to use animation. So for example, instead of this, you do this. As you're talking through your points, when you get to your point where your graph is important, the graph comes in, you discuss the graph, and then it goes out again and you carry on with your presentation. Right, referencing. Um, you can reference in different ways, but you should have references on your slides. So here, where my key points come in, I've just referenced afterwards and I've used a slightly smaller font. Not only should I reference, but I should also say the reference when I provide information. So according to Jones, renewable materials of 2007 to 2015 show 
and then off I go. Okay, or I can put my referencing on the bottom of the slide down here. And again, I still should say it when that key point comes up. Right, of course, all academic presentations must have a reference list and you must follow your particular referencing, APA, Harvard, Chicago. Um, and finally, you need to just proofread your slides and really check for things like spelling mistakes, uh, repeated words, grammatical errors that you might have made. Um, and if English is not your first language, please have someone else check your presentation because you may not see mistakes that someone else may see. Okay, so to summarise, first of all, think about your design. Then think about your fonts. Um, really reduce your ideas down to key points and really focus on presenting those key points um, clearly. Uh, use graphs and tables for visuals, one to two slides per minute, add animation for engagement, and don't forget your referencing. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on just the basics of providing uh, a good PowerPoint slide. Um, of course, there's not one way to present slides, and there are a variety of ways, but today I've just given a general overview of how to present slides um, in a simplistic and clear way. Thank you very much for listening, and if you want more information, please go to our website, Academic English UK slash presentations, where we have loads more information on giving good academic presentations. Thank you.